guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartson Family Farms. Today we're just heading to the National Farm Machinery Show in Kentucky again. Uh, GPS decided to take us through downtown, even though we were we stayed 20 miles out of town. Not sure on that one, but uh, it's all right. Uh, what, two miles. So yeah, so it's actually it's pretty neat. Cool skyscrapers and stuff. So yeah, we're just heading to the show. We'll be there shortly. Well, that was interesting. GPS took us through downtown for nothing, because now we just got right back on the interstate we were in. We are here! <laughs> He's happy. They're very happy to be here. Well, Kristen, what do you want to accomplish today? Read my book. She wants to read her book. Good. Alrighty, guys, she's just out and about right now. Uh, trying to get some stuff recorded before the swarm of people on Saturday. Like I said, I've heard Saturday's the busiest, busiest day around here, so trying to get some good good Instagram pictures for you before we take before I, this place gets flooded. So see if I run into anyone when I'm out and about. And again, I apologize for the crappy audio quality. Um, this will be the last, you know, second to last or last video with this crappy audio. So again, I apologize, but ooh, they got they got the tractor covered up. They must be doing a reveal this morning. We'll get some pictures. This is kind of neat, guys. So this is a Venturi 380. I have never seen one of these. It's a Vector, I believe. Vector machine. Yeah, it's made by RBR. It's a Vector. But this one's called the Venturi 380. It's supposedly the largest row crop applicator with 380 cubic yards of capacity in the back. It's an air boom. One thing I wish we did more of was have a little bit more uh, skid steer attachments to kind of help clean up our timber. So I think, so right now we have a grapple bucket. We have a kind of a clamp kind of a clamping thing to pull out trees but one thing I really wish we had was a stump grinder that thing would be really nice I will say the case booth does keep the day pretty entertaining uh, they always have good music playing shout out to case for that all right guys I'm gonna climb up in this Kloss Axion 880 tractor never seen one of these before I'm just gonna kind of explore in it a little bit so the hydro handle or the CVT transmission controller, I believe it's the CVT, I don't see any power shift levers on it, is basically the same type of egg type controller that's in the combines. Because it's basically just like an egg. It's the only type of hydro handle S, that's what I'm gonna call it, just because that's what I'm used to with combines. It's the only type that has like an egg, all the other ones are more sticks. So I think kind of interesting. It's a good, it feels nice in the hand. There's a lot of controls going on here. It would definitely take some getting used to, but. It's got a front PTO and a rear PTO. It's attached with a triple mower right now, but like I said, this is an Axion 880. To me, that means it's one of their bigger class eight tractors. And it seems like it, it's a decent sized tractor, but it could be a class seven too. I'm not sure on that one, but. Got a parking brake up here. It's got a left-hand shuttle reverse, forward rearward loader controls. So it seems like just about every run of the mill tractor, and I'm trying to decide the thing, I'm not sure what would actually differentiate it from, let's just say a Dutch Far or something, but I don't know, it seems like a nice clean tractor. It's got a lot of room in here. I think it's got more room than the du than the Dutch Far. I don't know, I like it. I've just never seen one before, never been in one, so it's just kind of interesting to see it. All right, guys, I've always wanted to check this thing out. It's Hydromax 3320 V-Plow. This thing is huge. It's got 20 plus long foot long tracks. It's easily 15 feet tall. So let's climb up it. Not a most luxurious cab in the world, but you don't need to have a luxurious cab when you're you got something this big. You're basically out here, you're doing work. So it's got a nice cab, it swivels. It's got guidance controls, all the controls you need. Guessing this is for all. I think this is, just reading it, it looks like this one's everything to do with the blade. And this one's actually running the propulsion, I'm thinking. But it's, that thing is huge. Like that, the tip of that receiver looks like it's at least 15 feet. It's taller than the cab. But it's actually a pretty roomy cab in here. Like this, this cab is huge. Nothing special, but it's got a nice knack box built in, which can double as a seat. I don't know. 
Anybody else recognize this from Farm Simulator? The side dump and rear dump Flegel. <laughs> That's awesome. Just like in Farm Simulator. It's pretty cool. So this is a cat skid loader. This is probably one of the coolest paint jobs I've ever seen on a skid loader. That's awesome. Wayne dealerships. They sell cat equipment it looks like. That is one cool paint job. Of course it's already sold. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Learning to do, doing to learn, earning to live, living to serve. That is one sweet paint job, guys. All right, guys, I'm at the Fent booth right now. I'm in front of the Fent Vario 714. So this is a equivalent tractor to that, um, I believe, to that 880. At least very similar in class sizes. They might be class 7 to class 8, but let's hop inside this Fent tractor. Never been in a Fent tractor before. Again, it just kind of got that European style feel, in my opinion, where it's got everything is colorful and I'm not impressed with the touch screen, but I mean, it's probably their low spec option. They probably have a high, I'm assuming they have a higher spec option, but it's pretty luxurious cab. I'm not going to lie. Like all the, just the interior fit and finish is just very automotive quality. In my opinion, it's gotta be a CVT. Yeah. Cause there's no gear shift. So it's gotta be a CVT. I don't know. I don't really like how this grip is. But, I mean, there's a lot of controls that get packed into this. There's controls on the back side. Looks like it's got a creeper mode. I'm assuming. Cruise and then go forward, rearward. There's a lot of stuff that goes into this, but this would take a lot of get used to. But honestly, the, the controls are pretty compact, though. I mean, there's a lot going on, but they're pretty compact. Like that, uh, the Deutz, the Deutz Far and the, uh, the Kloss. That was kind of there were, there were controls just about everywhere, but here it's just you got controls right here. Obviously, you get your SCVs and stuff like that. Then you got this for your propulsion, you get your loader, and then you got three points. I mean, it's all pretty compact. Then you got some more controls on the screen, but I mean, that's just like all your lights, windshield wipers. So I kind of like how this is laid out, guys. I actually really like this. It's probably my favorite tractor I've ever, I've never driven before. Just for interior wise, oh, compared to that Dutes and that um, Kloss and the JCB. Fent definitely has a reputation of being like a more higher quality tractor, so I can definitely see why. But, oh, I'm impressed. I kind of like it. If there was ever a Fent dealer in our area, I'd definitely like to try one. I know our neighbors runs a Fent uh, triple mower on his triple mower, but I'm not sure exactly what it is. I know it's not a thousand series, but I'd be curious to ride one for sure. It'd be kind of cool to see how the CVT works and how it runs. Quick interjection, that was a class six tractor. It's got about 150 horsepower. So not as equivalent, but still for a lower class size tractor, that would pretty quality stuff there. So I'm in front of the Lambton booth and we actually have our big grain leg is a Lambton. Our big 140 footer or whatever it is. Our tall dry grain leg is a Lambton. So one thing I wanna, I'm gonna try and talk to them later is uh, I wanna basically install a, a cable system that goes up to the top of our distributor on top of our leg. So basically grain comes up, flows, gets thrown up in here into this little chute. And then from this chute on our system goes into a distributor. So it goes into a couple system of diverters, which goes into, which eventually goes into pipes, which goes into bins. But uh, in order to change them, if we want to switch bins, we have to manually climb up that 120 feet or whatever and manually flip some cable, flip some levers. So I think it'd be really cool if we can get some cables that way we can do it from the ground. So I'm going to try and talk to them and see if I can get some information on instructions on how to how to do that. But yeah, right here is that's what a distributor looks like. That's not quite what ours looks like, but that's what a distributor looks like. One feature that's really unique that I believe only John Deere zero turn mowers have is what they call an X twill turf or a tire that has air an air tire like feel but it never can go flat on this z930m i believe it's only on the z900 series but essentially instead of having air on the outside the rub outside rubber is still the same but instead of having air it has these little uh i don't know what even to call them 
but these little uh, rubber deflector kind of plates but as you can see they kind of deform as they get as they go down uh, towards the bottom so they carry the weight and then they kind of spring upward and get uh, get back and return to their normal shape when they go uh, towards the top end of the tire so it's a cool thing I don't think any other competitor has but uh, just kind of a cool alternative to an air tire that, that we don't have to ever worry about flats or downtime associated with that you know guys I've never been in I haven't been in too many competitive skid loaders I've been in a case and a deer and a cat once too so never really tried a Mustang I've never actually been inside one or seen one so I think this is no time like the present Ooh, it's got an air ride seat kind of like that it's got instead of uh, like a pull down bar it's got this little these little new hickeys I don't even know what to call them so it's all hand controls but I don't know if it's ISO or if it's uh, H pattern I believe it's ISO yeah it's ISO because a, it says right there but the left hand controls the propulsion and the right hand controls the bucket but it's kind of neat well this is kind of cool watch this I can't really do it with one hand but try and hold you between my legs now that is an interesting style door guys it's kind of bifold down like a bifold door but I mean it's got plenty of clearance for me to get in and there's no the one thing I hate about our case is the door that opens up you can only you have to be your bucket has to be able to go all the way down or all the way up um, so you really can't be halfway up or doing something or carrying a load with be able to get in and out of your cab well this thing you can basically get in and out no problem it doesn't matter any level so this is really cool really cool but all your controls are right here oh I kind of like it I don't know if there's a dealer in our area but I don't know I, re I really like this thing no I don't know anything about the quality or how long they last or anyone else's impression of it but I don't know just the overall fin finish of the cab and aesthetics and everything plenty of room oh I like it one thing that would worry me though I guess would be how long these rollers would last so watch when I unlike that one this, those rollers right there that this that that track goes on I just wonder how long they last in the muddy conditions that we have so that's the only thing I worry about but still it's pretty cool in the spirit of trying things out let's try a gale This one's got the same style of entry door. Okay, that is a little bit less room than I thought before, but actually this looks like the exact same. This is the exact same. They must be the same company, but this is the exact, basically the exact same. Same style door where you pull down like that. Same style ISO, ISO controls. Yeah. So Mustang and Gale are the same. Didn't realize that. Looking at it from the back side, but this has got a pretty cool tower of tractors. It's a pretty cool display, I'm not gonna lie. Man, like an hour into it, and this place just got flooded. Way more people than yesterday already. Alrighty, guys, never been in a versatile tractor before. Well, should say, I've we used to own an old Ford Versatile, but I've never been in a Versatile mechanical four-wheel drive. So this is a Versatile 265. And it just seems like another tractor, I'm guessing. Not really sure all the controls here, but I'm thinking this is... I actually kind of like this. So forward, and then here's your power... I'm guessing this is a power shift because it's got gears, but forward, reverse, SCVs, throttle, PTO, three-point, everything's right here. I actually really like this layout. And I really like how the reversers kind of the forward reversers right here. I mean, it, it kind of sucks that I don't know, it'd be something to get used to that you can't, you know, just whoops or you can't bump it or something like that. But honestly, I really like how everything's right here, nothing's up here at all. You just got the hazards and a little bit of other stuff. But it's a really clean, nice tractor, and these things are sharp. Oh, they kept they are catching people's eye. I love it. Alrighty guys, so I found out a little bit more about this doohickey behind me. So it's actually a hemp harvester Hineker is working on. So basically what their concept is to essentially merge a 
bean cutting platform and a loading system. So essentially you can you can load a truck from either side. So it's got conveyors. This one's missing its, wing, its second wing, but basically you can load a truck from either side. You pull it with a tractor, almost like a hay bind where you can swing it from side to side, depending on which way you're going. And you essentially, you cut off the plant, you lay it, off, you lay it back onto the conveyors and it goes right into a truck for processing. So it's an interesting concept from, Hen from Henniker. And uh, quite honestly, I had no clue what it was. I mean, my best guess was something with the cattle industry, but that's kind of a cool concept. He, he said the engineer was here a couple days ago, so I, I'm a little upset I missed him, but oh well. I mean, this thing's, it's definitely interesting, that's for sure. We'll see, we'll see if anything comes of it, especially with all the new hemp stuff going on. So this is kind of an interesting idea, guys. Where instead of a conventional hay feeder that's made out of steel tubing, it's made out of, I believe, plastic? Not sure. Just looking at it, it's a, it also preserves it, so it kind of keeps it all in the center and doesn't let it actually touch the ground, the hay bale. So it's kind of an interesting idea. I guess I'm not a big fan of it because A, it's very heavy. Oh, what I like about our current hay, hay feeders is that you can move them by hand. You don't have to need anything to move them. And I don't know, I just don't really like the idea because if something breaks, like how are you going to fix it? I mean, steel, you can weld it. I don't know if you'll be able to fix that very easily. So, I don't know. Not a big fan of that idea, but it's a good concept. It's definitely something different. <coughs> but I was thinking that it was something lightweight. That's what that was, but oh well. I just got a bunch of information on this stuff, guys, and I completely forgot to video it. So, someone designed a lift kit for the R-Series sprayers. Interesting. So he said he gets it up to 80, 78 inches of clearance, ground clearance, by replacing factory struts, factory airbag with new things, and just manipulating the hoses. It's really interesting. Really, really interesting. I mean, heck, I can almost walk underneath it. And you can't do that with an R-Series sprayer. And this is a brand new sprayer too. It's an R4044. It's a new 1200 gallon spray chassis with the R4038. That's pretty cool. So, I don't know, like I said, Never seen that before, so it's kind of neat. Also, I've been saying neat a lot. Get over it. It's pretty neat. Here's a cute little sprayer, guys. It's a Mako GBM makes it. Same company that makes Prowler. But it looks like a 400 gallon sprayer, self-propelled. Probably a cheap option aluminum boom. Yeah, 400 gallons. Interesting. Then you got their big chassis sprayer over here, a Prowler. It's got an air boom on it right now. So the, the vectors and the prowlers I've never seen before in my area. I think they're mainly east of us, so like east coast and around here. So it's kind of interesting. Like I said, never seen these before. But this is a cute little sprayer. It's cute. I've seen these before, but this is a row independent corn head. You can go across the rows pretty easily, as you can kind of see right there. It's pretty neat. Neat. But I don't think it's very effective at all because you can't turn while you're doing that. Can't turn very sharp if, if you want, if you can. Um, and plus, like you just leave it doesn't leave the best residue from what I saw. And if you just watch someone going across the rows, they're just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. So I mean, it just I don't know. Cool concept, but they need to refine that so you can turn. And once you can turn with that, that's gonna be really nice. As I said before, guys, every single company has one of these. Everyone. 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 It's a zoo with so many kids, which is good. They need to learn about agriculture. They're just getting on equipment and loving it. So I'm in the West Building right now, and basically there's a lot of smaller, like, you know, one-off repair parts, you know, replacement wear parts, smaller companies, a lot of cattle stuff over here, so. It's pretty interesting stuff here, but nothing terribly worth videoing, but there were a couple of companies I found that I'm doing some spotlights on, so definitely check them out in the other video. Alrighty guys, so I'm taking a long way around, or I'm taking a shortcut back instead of cutting through everything and fighting all the crowds of people. They weren't kidding, Saturday definitely is the busiest day, but oh, it's still a lot of fun. So I have spent a total of a day and a half walking around this show, and I can say that I've walked by every single booth, but I haven't spent near the amount of time that I would have wanted to basically 
looking through and talking to people but i did talk to some i got some good uh good product information for you guys of products that i thought would be useful on our farms and some some stuff i did buy I'm just passing it on to you guys but uh that's gonna be the not one video another video that i'm doing but uh but yeah so let's see i'd say thoughts on the show would take i'd say two full days here would probably be enough to see everything bare minimum but yeah definitely two days if you want to get a good experience here so yeah we're gonna head back see if we can find any more people any more things that interest me where crystal and i are taking off here in a couple hours so look how slick the styling is this thing is awesome pretty slick looking Alrighty guys, well, I just want to thank every single YouTuber that I've met so far and all the, all, everyone that I've met here. They've been awesome to talk to, great advice that was given to me, and it was just a really fun time meeting the guys that are just, you see every day on YouTube and stuff like that. It was really cool to meet them and talk to them. Just, they're really cool guys, so I appreciate everyone that's, that I've met so far. I appreciate everyone that's helped me out, and it's been a blast, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and Ice cream is the best. Oh, you were supposed to feed me. <laughs> can't can't find good help these days. Cookies and cream ice cream is the best. <laughs> you, <laughs> she got me twice. I got a surprise or something that uh, I said I was gonna do later. So let's go. Alrighty, sorry I thought I was playing this better, but we're at KFC in Kentucky. That's right. Always. Like Yes. Right, we're going right. Right? That way! Let's go home. Bye KFC in Kentucky. Miss you. Well guys, come back to disappointment. Here's the package that uh, I needed. There's the hat that would have been nice. And the sunglasses that would have been nice driving. Slacker, slacker, slacker. So, well, let's go get this mic on to transform this audio. Also, I'm back home. Alrighty, guys. Can you tell a difference in the quality of videos that uh, you got that I'm going to be producing here soon? So, but anyway, uh, like I said, I think I just finally got this audio figured out. It took me a while to get it kind of dialed in, but uh, let's hopefully it works. But anyway, I am back in Iowa right now and uh, gonna hopefully start getting some more uh, farming videos back. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy kind of my perspective from the National Farm Machinery Show and all the kind of cool equipment that was there. It's kind of a different perspective being an engineer for John Deere, um, kind of seeing all the, giving my opinions on just about everything. Again, uh, none of these opinions represent John Deere or Deere and Company. They're all my own, my own personal entity, just kind of reiterating that, guys. But, but anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Heart Tongue Family Farms. Be sure to hit that post notification bell to let you guys know anytime I do post something. And of course, guys, as always, ta-ta for now.